I hope you're doing well this morning. Uh, I want to uh, take just a moment and welcome, if you're a first-time guest, or if you're watching online this morning, you may not know this, but there's people who watch online with us every Sunday morning, and so we want to welcome uh, first-time guests and those watching online. We want to say that we are glad that you are part of what God is doing in our church. and uh, We're in the fifth week of our five-week series called The Chain Breaker, and we have been talking about freedom. And so if you have just walked in this morning to uh, this series, then it may feel a little bit like you're coming in on the end of a movie. But good news, you can watch um, all four previous parts uh, on YouTube. You can get on there and search Bond Baptist Church, and uh, you can find the videos and watch those uh, so you can catch up to where with us where we are. And so last week we talked about um, how to get freedom from whatever it is that's holding you, from whatever it is that's holding you back, the chains that are holding you. And um, what we want, uh, what I want for my life and what I want for your life is that we would live the abundant life that Jesus has died to give us. And so... Um, here, here's where I'm at this morning. We have talked a lot about freedom in the last four weeks, and I hope that you have found some freedom in your life. I know that I have experienced freedom in areas of my life, and I hope that through this series you have experienced some, area, some freedom in some areas of your life. And uh, as I was thinking about freedom this week, I, I just decided in myself that I didn't... I didn't want to just settle for a moment of freedom. And so it'd be easy to think about freedom and to experience freedom in these five weeks. But I don't want my freedom to end when the series ends. I, I, I don't want to give up on my freedom just because this series ends. And so what I want to talk about today is not just how to experience a moment of freedom, but a lifetime of freedom. How do we stay free? How do we experience a lifetime full of freedom? And so if you have your Bible this morning, uh, you can flip over to Galatians 5 verse 1. And I want us to just read that one portion of Scripture. Uh, if you didn't bring your Bible this morning, there's a gold, Bible, a gold Bible in the back of your seat. And if you don't own a Bible, you can take that with you this morning. Uh, that's our gift to you. And we want you to take that and read it. And so, uh, Galatians 5.1, Paul is talking to the church of Galatia. And he says this, For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again. To a yoke of slavery. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. I want to give you just a little bit of context surrounding this verse this morning. Um, Paul is writing to this church uh, at Galatia, and he this church is full of Jewish people, and so these people were highly religious people, and. Um, the problem that the church of Galatia had is that they were always trying to justify themselves by their own good works. They were trying to do enough and be good enough to be justified before God. And in their zeal for God, they wanted to be made right with God, but they were trying to do it on their own and they wanted other people to do it on their own. And so what they would do is they would impose all these rules on people. Now all these regulations. And they were always trying to beat sin on their own. And the, Paul's point of writing this book to the people at Galatia was so that they would know that no one can be justified or be made right with God by being or doing Good. That's what the whole point of the book is. The Galatians wanted to make it complicated. 
And we can look down our noses at the Galatians and say, you know, the Galatians, they were trying to make everybody be circumcised. And the Galatians, they were trying to make everybody follow the Jewish rules and regulations. But uh, I feel like sometimes we make it as complicated as the Galatians did. We, uh, We may say that it takes Jesus to get to heaven, but oftentimes we carry the burden of our own sin. We, we try to get right with God. And what it looks like is that when you do something bad, you, you always feel like you have to do something good to make up for it. I know you all probably don't do that, but uh, maybe you messed up last week. Maybe you done that thing that you said you wasn't going to do. And, and so this week you came to church to set all that right. Has anybody ever been there? Yep. Me too. And what we do sometimes is we make the Christian life complicated. We set all these rules and regulations that God never gave us. And we feel bad when we break the rules that God didn't give us. And then we feel like God has distanced himself from us because we broke the rules that he didn't give us. And when you say it that way, it sounds a little silly, but... Jesus sums up his expectations for our lives in two simple statements. He said to love God and to love people. That's what God expects from us, and then we made all the complicated rules that go around that. And so, what we oftentimes do, and it's what the church at Galatia was doing, is we want to make rules that make us look more spiritual and make other people look less spiritual. We, we want to make rules that we can follow that others can't. And because they can't and we can, we feel more spiritual. Even though God never made the rules. So that's what we do sometimes and that's what the Galatians were doing. And they were a slave to that system. They were always doing that and, and they were trying to beat their sin by their own effort and by their own Ability. They were trying to break their chains by their own might. But Paul tells these Galatians, he says, Stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Paul was saying, don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, don't go back. You see, the thing about it is, God has brought us all from somewhere. In these five weeks, we've experienced freedom. But what the temptation for you and I will be for the rest of our life is to go back to the thing that God set us free from. And sure, we don't want to right now, but in a moment of weakness when the devil is tempting us, we will want to go back. You will want to go back probably sometime this week to the thing that God set you free from. What we're guilty of is that we think that just because we got free from a thing, that the devil won't bother us with that anymore. We think that when we we get freedom in this area of our life, that means that we will never experience temptation in that area of our life again. That's not what freedom is. Freedom is the ability to overcome the temptations when they come. And so if that is what freedom is, then there has to be temptations for you to really be in freedom. If there is no temptation, then you were never really in chains. And so, what I, I, the trap that I don't want us to fall in is to believe that just because the devil is tempting you, that you are still in those chains. Because here's what, here's what happens a lot of times. You can be free from addiction. But the devil will still try to tempt you and get you to live like 
you are still bound down to that. God may have set you free from whatever it was, but the devil's plot is to make you live like you are still chained. Let me give you this illustration. In the days of the circus, when they wanted to train an elephant, they would take the elephant when they were young, and they would tie a big strong rope around the elephant, and they would tie it to a post, or they would tie it to a a stake on the ground, and the elephant would begin to pull against that rope. It wanted freedom. It wanted freedom and it would begin to pull and tug and eventually it would find out that it couldn't get loose from that rope. It could not break free. And it would do that uh, time and time again. They would tie it up day after day and eventually it would find out that when it had that rope on its neck, it couldn't go anywhere. That's what that's how they would break these elephants and as they were a young elephant they would teach it this and when they got old what would happen is that you would go into the circus and you would see elephants that weren't tied to anything with a rope around their neck but standing in one spot. And so The elephants were full-grown elephants. They could have broke any kind of rope that the trainers put on them, but because when they were young, they tried to get loose and couldn't, they eventually stopped trying. And that's the tactic of the enemy for your life. He holds you for so long, and you'll try to get free, and you'll try to get free, and you try to get free, and you try to overcome, and you try to overcome. And it just doesn't seem like you can get loose. And then one day you finally get your freedom. You finally put your faith in Christ, and Christ sets you free. But then you have to learn to live like you're free. You have to realize you being free is not enough. You have to realize that you're free. You have to realize that you don't have to stay there anymore. And so what the devil will do, he'll put that rope around our neck that we felt for so long. And when we begin feeling that temptation, we'll just give up and say, there's no way that I could really beat this thing. He's going to try to trick you into living like he still has you chained. But I have good news this morning. You are free. You may not feel like you're free. You may not be acting like you're free. You might not even believe you're free this morning. But if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ to set you free, He has. He has set you free and you don't have to live that way anymore. John 8 says this, that you will come to know the truth and as you come to know that truth, the truth will set you free. So the way you stay free is by knowing truth. If it takes the truth, To set you free, it takes the truth to keep you free. That's the way that you stay free. I told you a few weeks ago that Jesus said that he was the truth. And that he was saying, you will come to know me. And as you come to know me, as you come to find out who I am and what I'm like and what I've done for you, you will find freedom. And so the way that we get free and the way that we stay free is by keeping our focus and our attention on our Savior. You cannot stay free by gritting your teeth and trying really hard. It didn't work to get you free and it won't work to keep you free. The only way that you can stay free from whatever it was that was holding you is to focus your life 
on Jesus. Stay focused on Jesus. Stay focused on the truth. What's going to happen is that the enemy is going to come sometime. I don't know when he's going to come in your life, but he's going to come and he's going to try to steal from you. He's going to try to steal your joy. And he's going to try to kill your faith. And he's going to try to destroy your life by causing you to live like you're still in chains. And he's going to lie to you. He's going to try to tell you that everything in the Bible was a lie and that everything I've told you from this pulpit was a lie. And he's going to begin to just try to destroy that message that you've heard. That good news message. And he's going to send people in your life. And they're going to say, you know what, you're not really free. I know you. You've done that for 40 years. I know that you're no different. And he's going to send people that's going to try to discourage you. And they're going to feed you lies. Because the devil knows that if you can stay focused on the truth, he will never have power over you. So the devil will begin to lie to you. But what do you do when the devil begins to lie to you? How do you fight? the devil when he begins to lie to you. You fight him with the truth. The only thing that you can fight a lie with is the truth. So what does that look like? When the devil begins lying to you, maybe he'll lie to you like this, he'll say, You'll never be free from fear. You'll never get over your anxiety. And he might even tell you, God wants you to have anxiety. You might even try to justify it. But when the devil begins to lie to you, all you have to do is say, actually, devil, you can talk to him. You can say, actually, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when he comes and he begins to lie to you and tell you that you have to feel ashamed for what you've done, that you ought to feel regret for what you've done, you just flip over to Romans 8.1 and you, you say, Devil, actually, there is therefore no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. I know what you're telling me is a lie. I know that it's not authentic. Let me show you what's the truth. When the devil comes and he begins to tell you that God couldn't love you. You've done too much and you've gone too far. He'll begin to tell you that you're unlovable. That you've been separated from God's love. You can just flip on over in Romans 8 while you're there. And you can tell him, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You have to tell the devil the truth. He's going to attack your mind and he's going to begin to tell you lies that you are not free. But you can tell him that Romans, or not Romans 8, John 8 says that he who the Son has set free is free indeed. You need to remind the devil of the truth. The devil may come around and he may tell you that you can never leave your past behind. That your past is going to haunt you for the rest of your life and that you'll never be able to get over it. The things you've done were too bad. 
You can remind them that 2 Corinthians 5 says that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. The only way you can fight the devil is with the truth. When Satan comes and he says, you'll never overcome that temptation. You'll never get over that thing. You'll never get over that addiction. Remind him that the Bible says God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you will be able to endure. (coughs) For every single one of the enemy's lies God has provided you with a truth to set you free. The enemy may lie to you and he may say, you know what, you're the only one being tempted. Everybody else's life is good and everybody else's life is great and yours is the only one that's falling apart. You're the only one going through this thing. God doesn't care if you're being tempted. But the Bible says that we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but who it want, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. You have to fight the devil with the truth. When he begins to lie to you, You have to respond with the truth of God's word about you. You can't see yourself the way you see yourself. Because appearances may be deceiving. You may not be acting like who who you really are. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are above and not beneath. You are the victor because Jesus has overcome. You have overcome. You just have to know the truth. That's why this word is so important. Did you know that Jesus didn't tell us to read this word because, so that we would have some kind of spiritual marker to make us feel better about ourselves? He gave us this word so that we could find life. And so that we could find freedom. And so we could live the life that he has created us to live. This book is not a book that we need to feel obligated to read. But it's a book that we should feel excited to get to be a part of. Because in this book there is freedom. There is life. There is abundance. But we have to know the truth. You know the, the thing about that verse that we often... Um, misquote is we say that the truth will set you free but that's not it this truth will not set you free until you know it until you know it the only way to know it is to get into it If if you have a hard time getting into God's word on your own then come to Sunday school and you can get into God's word with other people. If you have a hard time uh, getting into God's word because you can't understand it, then get a version you can understand. Do whatever it takes to find this truth and to live in it. (coughs) In 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6 3-6 through six, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but we have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive told by Christ. Let me break that down for us. Paul says, 
We can't fight the fight that we're fighting with this. Your flesh is not strong enough to resist temptation. Amen? Amen. You are not strong enough to resist temptation. You might once or you might twice, but you won't forever. You won't forever, so we can't fight this fight. We can't destroy strongholds by our own power, by our own ability, by our own might. But this is what he says. He says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And this is how we do it. By taking every thought captive to obey Christ. What does that mean? The word where captive comes from is the same word that captivated comes from. What Paul was saying is that the way we overcome, the way we tear down strongholds in our life is to be captivated by Christ. To be enamored by Christ, to be focused on Christ. If you want to see victory, not just for a moment, but for a lifetime in your life, the way you do that is by being captivated and focused on and centered around the person of Jesus Christ. That is the only way to win this war. By being, allowing your mind to, to stay focused on Christ. The truth by staying focused on the truth. So here's what I want you to do this week. When the devil begins to lie to you and he begins to tempt you and he begins saying things to you that you agree with like you'll never be any different. Sometimes the devil lies to me and I agree with him. Sometimes he says you'll never be different. And I'll, I'll say, well, maybe that's true. But then I get into this word and I see that that's not true. That that's not the truest thing about me. That this is the truth. And so when the devil comes and he begins to lie to you this week, what you need to do is say, Devil, I know the truth and I won't go back. I know the truth and I'm not going back. You may try to lie to me. You may try to deceive me. You may try to pull the uh, wool over my eyes, but I'm not going back. I know the truth, and I won't go back. The praise team's about to come and sing right now, and I, I just want to let you guys know that, that in this moment, we're about to open up the altar, and this is not a time where uh, you have to come up here, okay? But this is a time where we evaluate ourselves. And this is a time where we can reset our minds to be captivated by Christ. And so they're going to be playing some worship music and I want to invite you in to worship this morning. Because worship is a time in our week when we can just look at Jesus and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. I realize what you've done, Jesus, and I thank you for it. That's what worship is all about. And so whether you want to worship back there or whether you want to worship up here, if you need to talk to somebody, whatever you need, this time is for you. It's not for uh, me, it's for you. Whatever you need. And so I, I want to pray for us in this moment. And then we're going to open up this altar and have a time where we can enter the presence of God. And so God, we, we thank you for your truth this morning. 
God, we thank you that you have given us the power to overcome the devil. To overcome temptation, God. God, I I pray that in this moment we would be captivated by your work for us. God, that we would be focused on you and that we, we could just stand in awe of you. God, help us to stay free. Give us the strength that we don't have to go back. God, in this moment, we want to realize that we can't, but you can. God, we can't stay free on our own, but we know that you've given us power to overcome. And so, God, we thank you for that. Lord, we love you this morning. We honor you. Lord, we thank you for the name that's above every name. The name of Jesus. Amen.